welcome to the Cherry Pulse Podcast. This is episode 10. Yay! We're in the double digits now. Hi, everyone. So, um, we're coming to you from right outside New Orleans, Louisiana, and this is primarily uh, a knitting podcast with a little bit of other craftiness thrown in. So, I'm Robin. I'm Mary. You can find me as Teeny Button on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can find my Etsy shop, Teeny Button Studio, on Etsy, where I sell my hand-dyed yarn and project bags. And I can be found on Ravelry and Instagram. Nope. Ravelry and Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. As a Snip and Fool. And on Instagram, I am my angry orange cat. We also have a podcast group. It is Cherry Pearls Podcast on Ravelry. You can just do a search in the groups tab. I will also link it down below. And uh, you can find the show notes for this episode, along with our introduction thread and our cow news, uh, cow chatter thread and finished objects thread once the cow starts. You want to give them some details? Sure. Um, We are hosting a cow with Robin of the Stitching Between Pages podcast, and it is our summer colors cow. And uh, to participate in the cow, you need to knit a project that is at least 75 grams in weight And uses two different colorways. um, which At least two. Yes, I'm sorry. At least two. It can be more than two. Mm -hmm. But it has to be two different colorways, meaning two different skeins of yarn. So uh, self-striping yarn would not count. Um, It can be anything that you want um, to win. You need to be a member of the podcast group. Um, Robin has her roles in uh, her forums. But uh, her roles are probably going to be very similar similar to ours. Yes. So um, whips are um, able to be um, used. You can do use a whip as long as it is not 50% completed by the time the cow starts on June 1st. The cow runs from June 1st to July 31st. And i um, trying to think what else. Um, am I leaving anything out? Uh, we do have a bundle in the group. Oh. If you go to our Ravelry group, uh, we have put together a bundle of a large amount of patterns that would work for the cow. Uh, multiple yeah. colored uh, projects, um, things that look really pretty um, in solids, but in colors as well. Yeah. And you went kind of crazy. Well, I just, <laughs> you know. I, it's so I, much fun. I think it's once I did the um, three color cashmere shawl, now my mind thinks in multiple color projects. Mm-hmm. So these are things that I kind of had my eye on as well. So I'm like, hey, let me throw them in the bundle and see what happens yeah so um we are going to draw prizes from both the chatter thread and from the finished objects thread yes and the chatter thread is open it opened last sunday so uh, if you want to go on there and start chatting um some people have already posted the yarn they're going to use and there's some really good really good choices on there some really good colors that go together um one thing i want to mention i I don't know who it was it might have been someone on instagram was a little confused about what colors would count because they weren't summer colors Oh, it can be any yeah, color any, you want. any colors. Any colors you want. Because it's not summer all around the world right now. You know, the southern hemisphere is going into winter. So y'all can pick autumn colors or, you know, whatever kind of colors you want. Just more than one. Yeah, I think the word summer isn't really um, linked to the colors that you're using, but more the season we're doing the cow in. So you can knit in any color you want to. Um, you know, winter colors, summer colors, spring colors. Doesn't whatever matter. colors. Whatever Black colors. and white, whatever. Yeah, you know. whatever makes you happy. Yeah. It's your project. So I think that's it for, yes. for the cat news. Yes. You want to jump into finished objects? Sure. Okay, go first. All right, well, my first finished object is my favorite mm-hmm. doctor socks. Um, these are just your basic vanilla socks. I did a fish lips kiss heel and rounded toe on both. And then a one by one rib at the top. Um, they are knit in Knit Picks Felici and the time tra- in the Time Traveler colorway, and I knit them on U.S. size one needles, two point two five. Something bothering you? I'm just looking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the Felici is so soft. Yeah, like the it Felici, blows my mind. It is very soft. Yeah. And um, yeah, these flew off the needles. Um, vanilla socks tend to do that, so um, I'm happy with them. Can I steal a sock block? Yep. Okay. I need to do these first because Robin <laughs> needs my sock blockers. Yeah, the, the socks that I knit, um, I finished my monkey socks. I'm going to put it on the blocker so you can see the pattern. Yeah, but um, for some reason, they came out b- 
bigger than other socks that I've knit before I on mean, the blocker. Maybe they don't stretch as much because they fit my foot the same. What do you mean by bigger? Like um, on my sock blocker, I had this much of the sock hanging over the end of the toe on my sock blocker. So they're coming out longer on the foot. Yeah, but, but they fit my foot the same. Well, so maybe they don't stretch as much. I don't know. These are beautiful. Yeah, these are my monkey socks by Cookie A. And um, I did the no pearl monkeys, and I did them toe up so the pattern is reversed. I did two by two ribbing at the top. I think it calls for one by one, one by one, but I like two by two. Um, and I kind of like how there's like a gap in the middle of the stitches. I kind of like the way that looks it's with the twisted, yeah, twisted rib. But um, twisted rib is is so pretty to look at, but ugh, to me it's tedious to do. A little bit, yeah. Um, so I knit this on a size one, um, size US one needle, which is a 2.25 millimeter. 2.25. Uh, cast on, I had to do some modifications because the 64 stitch count didn't fit my foot right over my instep. So I cast on 12, increased to 64, and then about here, I increased to 68. No, 66. And then... Um, so you just added two stitches and up, it made a big difference? Yeah, it's... it's Wow. Yeah, it's weird. Um, up here, I increased to 68 because I usually do all my socks 68. And sometimes they're a little, it's a little bit baggy on my foot, but we've talked about this before. I like my socks a little bit looser because I wear them mostly to bed and around the house. So I don't need them to have that negative ease. Um, the yarn. <laughs> the yarn is um, my own hand-dyed yarn, Teeny Button Studio Feats sock, which is my um, 7525 Merino ni Superwash Merino Nylon Base. And this is in the Tiffany's box colorway. And I have some of this in my shop right now on BFL. And I've dyed it up on every other base that I have, but I haven't put it in my shop yet. Very pretty. So if you're interested in, in this yarn, in this base, or any of my other bases, let me know. Because I have it, and I can always dye up some more. But um, I'm not going to have a shop update this week. It'll be next week. So if you want it before the shop update, feel free to contact me. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, fish lips kiss heel. As usual. So I'm really happy with them. Uh, and this is for the um, cookie jar. Yeah, the cookie jar cal hosted by the Fawn Knits and Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. And I believe it runs for an, at least another month. Another month and a week or whatever. So um, I might do another pair of cookie socks Because I have time. Yep, you do. Yep. And these were a relatively fast knit. I finished them Monday. And I started them on the first. So two, three, two and a half weeks for a pair of socks. It's not too bad. And I really I like them. I really love the yarn. I really I really love this colorway. I think that colorway is really yeah. very, very pretty. Yep. So that's my one and only finished object for this week. Well, I have a second object. As you can see, it was almost finished last week, but I still needed to block it. And it is my summer leaf shawl. Make sure I have it going the right way. Yes. Okay. This is a summer leaf. As you can see, it's got the small leaves on the bottom and the top, small, uh, bigger leaves on the top. That's so cool. And then it's beaded. Um, this is knit. Let's see here. You can see how long it is. So ooh, all the way across. And the beads are from the Artful Bead. Oh, I found another end. I forgot to snip. Don't look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, this is knit in Madeline Tosh, Tosh sock in the Midnight Pass colorway. And I bought this at a good yarn in Sarasota. And then the beads are beads that I picked up from the Artful Bead when we were at DFW a month or so ago. Um, this project caused some problems. Um, after oh, I, guy. yeah, after I knit the project, I did my usual, uh, soak, um, just in, in some wool wash just to kind of, um, I don't know. That's just the process I go well, through. Well, you want to clean it. Cause I know that whenever I knit, like I have it all over my lap and all over the sofa and, you know, all over the end table and who knows what kind of crumbs and whatnot and dirt gets on it. That doesn't really happen with my nets. I don't leave them laying around that as much. But anyway, I'm, I'm it's messy, just, I guess. It's just part of the process that I go through. And so when I went to soak this, it bled horribly. I've never had a yarn bleed this much. And I was heartbroken. 
Um, I rinsed it for 20 minutes. The water still was running blue. So I did another soak. It was still very blue again. It, it was blue. I mean, I soaked it four different times. Every time it was blue. I sent an email to Madeline Tosh telling them about the issues that I was having because it seems to me that, that the color wasn't set. And I also uh, sent an email to a good yarn to let them know that if anybody else has bought that colorway that they may want to, you know, set the color before they uh, knit a project in it. And um, I, I wish that I had done that because I was just you know, extremely upset the amount of time and um, expense that had gone into this with the, you know, cost of the yarn and the beads and everything. So um, I never heard back from Madeline Tosh. Um, this was on Monday and today is Friday. Um, you know what today is? The 19th. The 20th. Oh, I'm sorry. The Friday, May the uh, 20th. So um, they have never gotten back with me. Um, if you know, have, may have noticed, Robin and I did do a tutorial on how to set the color in yarn. And so um, we posted that this past weekend, uh, uploaded it this past weekend. Okay. And so at this point, I didn't know what to do because I was afraid to wear it with anything in, in fear that it would bleed on things. And when I say the color is was blue... The color was blue, and I have some pictures that Robin... It looked like Kool-Aid. Yeah, Robin can insert some pictures, and um, these are after multiple washing, I mean, multiple soakings, that the color was still running this dark. So um, what I did, ended up doing was I did the tutorial um, on the project instead of just on the yarn. Um, the beads, thankfully, were glass beads, and so they um, glass melts at 1700 degrees um, according to the ladies at the Artful Bead I called them I was 99% positive they were glass beads but I wanted to make sure and uh, yes they were glass beads and they told me that you know glass doesn't melt um, until it gets that high and I know my oven doesn't get that high <laughs> and the tutorial is to put it in for 300 at 300 degrees so I went ahead and did that and it worked so um, I was really really happy that the color no longer bleeds the dark dark color it does um, I will still probably be careful with this project probably won't wear it with a solid white um, just on the off chance you know that some little color may escape but um, this has me um, I don't know, I guess I'm a little shell-shocked now. I want to set every yarn that I use now before I put it into a project. So um, I um, have done that with a couple of yarns that are out uh, drying right now that I'm getting ready to knit up. Um, I did do that with the yarn that I was going to knit with for the uh, Love of Spiders. So that's why I haven't actually started that one yet because I wanted to reset that one again just out of fear you're paranoid I am I'm so paranoid now and I I, I feel sad kind of in a way because I just assumed that you know this this isn't I mean I know that this is not a huge company in terms of like Cascade and Rowan and and those names but I mean you find this yarn everywhere so in my head this isn't some tiny indie dyer who is just starting out. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this is going to happen in a very long, you know, in a yarn that is sold so many places worldwide. Mm -hmm. But then I started thinking about it. I mean, the hedgehog that I had in my three color cashmere shawl bled. And that's another yarn that you find in a ton of places. Usually it's the dark blues and the dark reds. Yes, yes. And, and I think, you know, because the other one that bled was blue too. The other one that bled was blue too. So, I don't know if it's something about the pigment or what, because because it's interesting. It's you can't really tell until it dries if it's excess dye that was just clinging to the outside of the fiber, or if it's dye that just didn't get absorbed and it's inside the fiber. And the only way to tell is to to compare the colors. Mm -hmm. So it, I can't tell if it's just an overabundance of dye it wasn't rinsed enough, or if it wasn't set properly. It's hard to tell. Well, I do have the partial stain. Um, that I didn't use, I bought, I didn't use up. I bought two skeins and I just used a tiny bit of the second skein mm -hmm. for this project. So I could go back and compare the two yeah. and see exactly what it was. But, you know, we know that this is a problem with certain colors. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, not everybody knows that, but dyers know that. So you'd think that they would be especially careful with colors that are prone to do that. Yeah. So um, maybe it was just a bad batch. Well, um, I did go on the Madeline Tosh Facebook page, mm -hmm. and there was another lady who had posted on there about being upset. She had knit a sweater for her husband, and it bled horribly. And the response um, from Madeline Tosh was that that had been a problem with a batch, and that person no longer worked there. So who knows? Um, I mean, I'm sure they'll handle it. They're a really good company, I feel. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm not saying anything against the company. Yeah. I'm just... You know, mistakes happen, people are careless no matter, you know, you, you, sometimes things happen, you know, and so I was just really upset, but now it's kind of made me paranoid, but I'm glad the project is finished. I really love how it came out. This was a great pattern. I loved putting the beads into it, and, um, you know, I'm much happier now than I was on Monday. <laughs> so anyway let's move off of this okay um whips how many you got i have one work in progress um because i was dealing with this and uh finishing up the doctor's okay. house i have two so i'll go first yes um okay so this is in my whimsy stitches bag uh, i won this bag from the caffeinated knitting hats for kiddos last year and uh rick who is the sewist or the artist behind freckle uh, not freckle whimsy whimsy stitches it's really um, cute actually lives in new orleans fairly close to me actually so um that's pretty cool i love how it has the clear yeah the clear vinyl and then the little yeah print it's really cute and that way you can see which project is and i love it yeah and it matches you got it does you've this, got your beautiful it, yarn matching your beautiful bag this is can you hold that for a second yes ma'am this is my autopilot um, I guess it's a cowl, like an like an infinity scarf, like a long loopy cowl. Um, and this is knit out of my hand spun. And believe it, I've shown this before, um, but I did put a couple rows into it this week. Yeah, this is a project that you'd started a while back. A long time ago. I wanted to wait until after winter camp was finished because whips didn't count for winter camp. So pretty. It's so hard to hold it up. <laughs> Because it keeps wanting to curl in on itself. Yeah, and because it's in a circle, it's not like you can yeah. hold it straight. Yeah, um, I don't know what size needles these are. <clears throat> They're probably. I mean, seven. Is that a yarn gauge? Seven gauge. gauge. Yeah, well, I mean, using whatever the pattern it recommends. Um, this is the Autopilot by Dominique Trad, I believe. Mm hmm. Yes, okay. <laughs> and this is the hand spun that you bought uh, from the fiber you bought at the Ren Fest? Yeah, um, the lady at the Renaissance Fair, she has Beautiful. a weaving booth, but she also has um, a couple braids of fiber and some art yarns, and that's where I picked up my first spindle ever in 2010. Yeah, 2010, I picked up a spindle, and I just, I, I really enjoyed it, but I wasn't, like it wasn't balanced properly, so I just went ahead and bought a wheel. But now I can spindle spin. But that was like my first foray into spinning. So um, I have no idea what the content of this is. It just says 100% wool. It's really pretty. So it's probably some sort of mix. And um, this is about a DK worsted weight. I didn't really check the, the uh, wraps per inch. Looks more worsted. Yeah. But... Um, Sorry, there's a cat fight, as usual. As usual. If you hear that, that's... And they're actually under this yeah. fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, not much to say. It's a really easy, simple pattern. I'm really enjoying it. And it's nice. This is the first thing I've ever knit with my hand spun, if you can believe that. Wow, really? Yeah. Well, I'm I glad have, you're using I it. I have so much hand spun, and I don't knit with it because it's like once it's gone, it's gone. Which is stupid because like you're, it's there to be enjoyed. But it's not gone if it's in a project. Yeah, I don't. It's like you can never knit it again, which is stupid because you can always rip it out and knit it again yeah, if you want yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. It's a mental block thing. But really easy pattern. It is a free pattern. Um, there's a fingering weight version, which is Copilot. Co yeah, she's named that one Copilot. Yeah. Very good, mindless pattern. I love it. Very pretty. I'm really enjoying it, and it matches my project bag. Love it. Okay, well, my only work in progress this week is another pair of socks. And these are the Bubbles Down the Drain socks by Stacy Perry, and they are lace. Um, I've never knit lace socks before, 
and um, I'm doing this as part of the Fancy Feet uh, to Fancy Feet Cal that the grocery girls are doing. And I am knitting these two at a time on two separate needles. So these are also size one. Um, and the yarn is Cascade Quattro. Is that because it's a four ply? Um, I have no idea. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know how do you tell if it's a four ply. Sometimes it'll say. I so don't see it. But this is 75 uh, superwash, 25 nylon. And the color is... Five six seven seven. Woohoo! Yeah, it's a really interesting yarn. It's like barber pulled with a light purple and a lavender. A light purple, and lavender. a purple and a lavender. Yet when it knits up, it almost kind of looks a little tweedy, which is kind of neat. Yeah. So um, I'm right now. I'm just doing the pattern on the instep and leaving the uh, sole side. Um, just, you know, straight stuck in it. Don't do like me and do the pattern on both sides. <laughs> and then once I turn the heel, then I'll put some patterning on um, all the way around it before I bind off. Do you leave the one inch of stockinette above the heel on the back like she recommends? Was, yes, okay. I, do. I do too. Yeah. Yes, I definitely do because that makes the heel fit a lot better. I so, um, I don't know. She did a lot of research. But I really like these. Um, these... Uh, the stitch count on this is 60 um, stitches, and I normally do 64. So you can see it kind of pulls in a little bit here. One, uh, you but they're know, real stretchy. But they're extremely stretchy. Um, this is definitely one of the projects that I went and um, looked at all of the notes that people had done on their projects in Ravelry. I don't know if you do that, but I'm a big believer in doing that. Um, there's a lot of people who do different modifications. And, in fact, with this particular um sock the original pattern doesn't have the lace centered on the instep and so someone has um, come you know put in their pattern notes the modification to get that centered and so that's actually the patterning that I'm using for it and I will put that in the notes of my project if anybody is interested in knitting the sock also you know it to me it makes sense that if you're going to knit it you'd want the lace centered so, um, yeah, these are going along well. It's a four pattern, re uh, four row repeat, so it goes pretty quickly. Um, rows two and four are the same, so you just really need to remember rows, you know, three rows worth. Mm. And, um, yeah, I started them right before last, so that's where I am. All right, that's my only work in progress. I have one. Um, last week I showed this yarn. And I asked in the, um, on the podcast for people to post recommendations for what pattern I should use. And I had a bunch of people say Hermione's Everyday Sock. So that is what I'm making. And oh. you've never knit that. I never have. This is in my, um, my flower crown kitties bag that I made. And I wish I, had, I wish I had more of this fabric. It's really cute. I sold the other bag out of this fabric. And I want to make some more. Um, and then I have my Dana Couture. Uh, DPN needle, yeah. DPN needle, DPN holder, which is used, not used for DPNs because I don't do DPNs. I don't like an extra needle. Nice. It's <laughs> <laughs> so my backup in case I want to start a new pair of socks. So um, this is the Hermione's Everyday Pattern. That looks really nice with those socks. Yeah, I really. Whoever I'm, gave you that suggestion was yeah, spot on. Yeah, it was a bunch of people. And I knit. Um, I almost knit it before. I was trying to decide between the blueberry waffles. And this pattern. Mm -hmm. And I chose blueberry another waffles. great pattern. Blueberry waffles. Um, so, yeah, this is my little lipstick stitch mark uh, progress keeper. Progress keeper. Um, and then I'm knitting these 68 stitches. These are size US ones, as usual. These are Chiago's with the red cable. And Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And I'm just trucking along just just going along these are like my mindless knit because it's only it's only two different rows it's a four row repeat but two of the rows are knit. they're going they're mm, there's a good fight going on uh, pearl will not leave cereza alone and cereza is not happy so if you hear anything that is always cereza if you pearl makes no noise whiskers makes no noise whenever they're doing their thing. But Cereza is very loud. She's so. pitching a fit. Yeah. And for some reason, Pearl is stalking her. It's pretty but, funny. Well, 
She Sarazen, deserves it. Sarazen will get her back at some point. Yeah. And they never hurt each other. They're just Now, Carl's just jumping out at her, and Pearl, I mean, and, and Sarazen's just angry. I mean, there's no real fighting fighting. It's yeah. just, leave me alone. Stop bugging me kind of a deal. Yeah. Which she's not. Yep. So this is fun to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hermione's everyday sock. Let me turn off the volume real quick. Um, Hermione's everyday sock. And, oh, this yarn is by the Knitology. It's the Knitology sock. What's it called? Yeah, just Knitology sock in the Miss Etiquette colorway. And it looked like it came from a blank. Because it came like that and it's all kinked up like it was knitting. Yeah. But it's not dying. It's not knitting up like it was dying in a blank. Yeah, it is. I don't think so. Oh, I think so. It looks more like it's been hand painted to me than like in a blank with like stripes or gradients or anything. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. How could it not have been a blank with the waviness of it? Well, it depends, I guess, on the width of the blank. How it knits up. Yeah, but why are you saying it can't be a blank? No, it could. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just think I expected it to gradient stripe. Just from yeah, the way but it may it looks. not have been dyed in a gradient. Yeah, but that's that's what I expected. Because, I, I mean, I haven't found... I don't know how big the Knitology um, sock subscription is, which is what I have. But I haven't seen this colorway on Ravelry or anything, so I've never seen it knit up. But I've seen lots of blanks that are not dyed in gradients. Oh, well, that's... A lot, a lot of people are doing the, the sock blanks that look like they're stamped. And there's t it's totally not a gradient. And that's what that kind of looks yeah, like to me. Yeah, maybe that's it. I mean, those, they're gorgeous. I mean... Uh, there's some of them are such works of art. I would, you know, how you spelled about your hand spun, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't want to knit with it. Some of those sock blanks are so beautiful in and of themselves. I'm like, I almost want to put that on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not knit with it because once you knit with it, it doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah. You know? I've never bought a sock blank before. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm curious about knitting with one. That, that might be something I put on the... The bucket list, mm -hmm. you know, something that no I want to do. Do you want your needles oh, back? Oh, yes, I need those. Um, so that's all I have for for right now. That, I'm whips. done with whips. You're done okay. with whips? Um, I do have something I'm going to do next up, but I'm going to talk about that in stash. Okay. So you want to do stash? stash? Throw me something. Throw me something, me something mister. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead and do this. And okay, we'll that's what I was saying. Okay. We could do the ones that go together together. And okay. I have... Two stashes that don't go together. So um, I ordered this a while ago. Plucky Knitter, I've never gotten my hands on because it's not, the way that they sell isn't like a normal site. What they do is they do like blog updates and then you. No, the race is above us. So and then you um, got away. add it to your, like you pay through PayPal, not through like Etsy or through um, Store Envy or whatever. But I caught an update on their blog. And I got this skein, which is my first ever skein of Plucky. It's pretty. This is their single base, um, 430 yards, 8020 merino silk in the pinky swear colorway. And it's really pretty. It is. It's really pretty. I, I really love it. I expected it to be more pinky, but it's more purpley in person. Mm -hmm. But maybe once you unwind it, maybe there's some pinks hiding up in the twist. Yeah. But um, I am gonna I'm gonna set this because sometimes purples have a tendency to bleed, and I'm gonna use this to knit my project for the summer colors cow. Oh, I decided, yeah. And you've got a pro you've got your project. Picked yeah, out. my project is gonna be the Stella Luna shawl by Laura Ayler. It's um, it's what do you say? It's like a crescent shape. It's like a it's it's a, like a half circle. Like yeah, kind kind of um. But it's shaped with like, like gesturing with the yarn. It's got points on it, and it looks like bat wings. Yeah, it's really a, a very pretty pattern. And so I assume the name Stella Luna is after the book about the children's book about the bats. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this probably for the main color, and then I'm gonna use um, some of my own singles base, um, either in a white or I might dye up a really light purpley gray. That'd be pretty. Because that's, um, this is merino silk and mine is just 100% merino. But they're similarly soft, I think. Mm -hmm. So, I'm excited. I think that looks nice. I like the color. Mm. But I'm definitely going to set this because 
I'm yeah. paranoid too now. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't want to have the what pro- what happened with the three color cats. Well, especially if it's going to be with like a white or well, white exactly, color. and that's what happened with that. The blue bled in uh, into the purple. I mean, into the gray. This was just you know, obviously a single color project, but um, yeah, I'd do that too. Yeah, because I am paranoid now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I also got. Let me get the card so I can read. Um, I showed earlier the yarn I got from the Knitology. Make sure there's no coupon code on there. Knitology Sock Club. And this is the yarn they sent me this month, which I think is really pretty. It is very pretty. I thought about canceling last month because I did not like last month's skein. Now, I thought it was called something else, like Knit Crate or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's it's the Knit Crate Knitology Sock Club because okay. the Knitology is their brand, their okay. in-house yarn, I think. That's what threw me off when the package yeah. came. I'm like, did you subscribe to a different one? Because no, I always hear Knitology. It's Knit Crate. The regular Knit Crates, they do other you know, other yarns. Some They have Knit Crate Indie. They have Knit Crate Sock. They have Knit Crate Minis. Okay. Um, but the Knitology Club is their hand-dyed yarn. And um, this is the color Sunburst. Yeah, Sunburst. And um, I'll read what I love is this right here. I'll read what they wrote this about right it. This right here is just, oh, yummy. I mean, all the colors of the rainbow in that little part. It says, um, we hope you enjoy the enclosed hand-dyed yarn. This month we were inspired to create colorways that liken the celestial skies. Brilliant blues, soft purples, spectacular reds, and oranges are just some of the beautiful hues you might find in your beautiful yarn. Whether you receive sunbursts, which is this one, or Saturn's rings, we know you're going to love these new exclusive colorways. Beautiful. Yeah, I really, I really love it. I love that end with the... This little bit right here. Mm-hmm. I love it. And it's not so variegated that it would be cool funny, you know? Because that's one of the reasons I don't like to use variegated yarns. But this one, I think, would be pretty. So that's going to go in the stash for now while I think about what I want to do with it's it. It's got to marinate. Yeah, I know. Um, so that's all I got from, from stash that's not from our collective stash. Correct. Okay. So, um, on Friday through the weekend, we took a a quick trip to Houston to visit my mom and my sister. And while we were there, we went to Yarntopia in Katy. And um, this is a really nice little yarn shop. Um, Here's the card for their information. Um, Cheryl is the owner. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, We've been there um, pretty much every time we go to Houston. Uh, We stop because it's not too far from they were closed for house. inventory last time and we were I, know, so sad. I know we were like oh we're gonna go get her dead on and yeah. we pull up in front and we're like oh. she has a fantastic store dog yeah and we didn't get a picture of her no why didn't we do that oh, we just forgot but we, we, got- we did take pictures of the store yeah and we'll insert them um as we're you know in here as we're talking about it mm-hmm. but um robin and i both had to <clears throat> make a purchase yeah. It took me a lot longer than it took her. No, I went in there and I kind of made a beeline. Yeah. Um, in uh, one of the last um, episodes of the Suburban Stitcher, um, that is her LYS, she talked about this dyer that she had um, picked up some yarn in the store. And the name of the uh, dyer is called the Fiber Seed. So I wanted to get some of that yarn. So this is the yarn that I bought. I bought one too. And we both <laughs> bought it. Yeah, I made a beeline for this, and Robin really couldn't decide, and this one was calling her name, and she kept putting it back, because she didn't want to buy the same yarn as I have, but you know, I started thinking, how cool would it be to have the same yarn, but we're knitting two totally different projects with it. Um, Mine will go in a shawl, and Robin is thinking about doing socks with hers. But um, here is the card. Well, let's see if I can do it without putting my hands all over it. <laughs> let's see. Oh, I don't know if I put the... It's got a QR code for a free pattern. Oh, I didn't realize Yeah. That. Okay, well, let me put Don't my steal finger. the pattern, guys. Well, I'll put my finger over it. But anyway, um, this is the fiber seed, and um, this is her yarn, and this is her sprout base, which is 90% superwash, 10% nylon, and it's 480 yards. That's a lot of yardage. Yes, and the colorway is called Funfetti. <laughs> so I bought this. And to go with it, this. So these are the two colors that I'm going to put in a shawl at some point. Mm -hmm. You already know that I will be setting this color. I set that one too. I probably will set this one too. Yeah. Oh, here's her label. Yeah, it's a better better tag. Sorry. She has a website. I don't know if you can order from the... We probably can. Here we go. The Fiber Seed. Yeah. And this color right here is Aqua. 
and it's the same base. So she had some gorgeous solids. She did some absolutely gorgeous solids. It was hard to pick, but right now I don't know. I'm feeling the blue, but it's really soft and it's the same color almost. I have a bunch of this <laughs> same color, but you know I'm I'm a firm believer in knitting what you love. And this is what I'm loving, and I like the blues. And the color looks good on you. Didn't someone at DFW tell you that color looked good on you? Yes, yes. I had several people who stopped me. Um, one of the days I was wearing a, a, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the shawls I had knit, and it was blue. And it was the exact color that you're wearing now. I don't think it was exact, it but was it was close. extremely similar. And so, yeah, this is... This is my color du jour. So that's what I bought. Yeah. Made me happy. So I bought a skein of the Funfetti. And I did not buy a full skein to go with it. I bought one of these little 18 gram minis. She calls them seedlings. Seedlings. And it's 60 yards, 18 grams. So it should be enough for heels and toes. Just gesturing with the yarn today. Uh, and this is the color raspberry, which matches. Do you see who's joined us over here? Well, pick her up and show her. No, because she's going to want to squirm and get down. Oh. Carl's sitting like... I put usually I put my things here. Robin likes to put her things behind us, but I have a chair that's sitting next to me and Pearl sitting on the chair. Oh wait, you're gonna come up? Oh, someone's in my lap. <laughs> you see the tail? Um, yeah. So these are gonna go together. These two, not that last one. Um, for heels and toes. <laughs> and then I bought this skein to put in my blanket. This is another seedling in the chartreuse colorway. Oh wait, don't get my drink. <laughs> I'm going to pick her up and show her because people love to see her. Come here. Oh, she's heavy. She went to the doctor yesterday for her one-year checkup because her birthday's the end of the month. She weighs 9.5 pounds. We all surprised. thought she weighed a lot more. No. She's just solid. She says hello. No, she doesn't. She's just coming <laughs> me down. I want it up here when it was my choice. She doesn't now. mind being held. She doesn't mind being in your lap, but she doesn't want to be confined. She wants to be in your lap when it's her decision, yeah. not your decision. Typical cat. Well, that's kind of how cats are. They want it to be all about them. Um, they're kind of, in a way, like husbands. you got to kind of trick them to make them think that it's their idea, that they thought of it when it's really your idea. So I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> all right, so that's what we picked up at um, Yarntopia. And it's a wonderful store. And like I said, the owner, super sweet. And they had a great shop dog. Maggie. And they had, um, this was um, Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and they had a, a knitting group meeting in the back that they have, I think it's on Saturday morning. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really nice ladies, and I would recommend it to anybody. Great store. I wish we had time to go in there and, like, hang out with the ladies. Yeah. It, it was, I would definitely enjoy it. It was very comfortable, welcoming. They had a lot of notions I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. They had some um, cards with hand knitting on the front. Yeah, they, they had some had, really cute yeah. things. You so know. if you're in the area, definitely go check it out. I recommend it. Yep. Uh, I think that's all we have knitting-wise. Um, I will have a shop update next week, which is uh, May 27th at 3 p.m. Central Time. I'm moving it up two hours because I get impatient. I, get all, <laughs> I do my photography in the morning, and I'm like, I want to post it. I want to post it because I'm just so excited about what I'm making. So I should have... Um, a bunch of full skeins. I have a bunch of Tiffany box. Um, I have what else? Oh, I'm gonna have a new mini skein set, which uh, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'm really excited about it. I'm super excited about, about it. This. Have you told me about this? Yes, I told you about this. Okay, we See brainstormed about it. I don't even remember. Okay, we'll talk about this off Lose air. Your mind. Anyway, it um, ain't lost. It's just gone. A new a new mini skein set. And probably your mini skeins have sold really well. Yeah, I really like doing them because they're fun. It's a way, fun way to experiment without the investment of a full skein, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just think it's really cool to get, you know, especially if it's a themed mini set. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if if there's something that you know is, is speaking to you, like you know, one mini set that you've done has have been the evolution. Mm -hmm. So if you're a gamer, you might get a kick out of that. And then the other mini skein set that you've done has been the, all the New Orleans colors. And I think that's a really cool thing, you know, to pick up whenever you're out of town and you're coming to New Orleans yeah. to, to, you know, get a little souvenir. That would be a cool thing to have. Yeah. This new set is going to be just a little hint more on the geeky nerdy side. Okay. Are you climbing up behind me now? So, uh, did you, did you, do you see someone behind me? I'm trying to wait. 
Look, there she is. She's climbing up the back of the chair. Yeah. Um, the new mini skein set is going to be more on the geeky nerdy side. Just a little hint. She's back. And uh, that'll be next week. She wants this crinkly bag. That's yeah, what she, she wants. she probably does. So uh, that's all we have for this week, I think. Okay. Pearly, you have anything to share? Yeah. That tail. <laughs> Yeah, she keeps going after my drink. And she's after the computer. Yeah, All right. I wish we could get her to come do like Yoshi did. Did you see Candace's oh, last yeah. podcast with Yoshi coming? And, and it sitting. Was, la was it the last? Yeah, one? the very last oh. one. She does it again, and he comes and he gets right up on the keyboard. He's got that big eye. And he's mm -hmm. getting telling you goodbye. I thought it was great. Yeah. Well, she would step on the keys and turn it off. Well, there, there's a possibility of that. Oh, there's the head. You can see Hello. the little facer. Hello, little bit. Okay, so that's all we have for this week. And we will see you shaking the thing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't should have scratched so vigorously. And um, we will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.